First thing you want to do is paint him with, uh, uh, or like, uh, put some base coat sealer on him, uh, kind of like as a protectant, or use something like sand and sealer even. Uh, sand and sealer is real good. Uh, you know, a couple of coats you can brush on, or spray on, depending on what you use. Got my off flight. And let's see. Hope we go along the belly. No problem. Feel like I do my bath. I'll go up. Uh, I give the breast area. Be coating. Okay, now this is the skin mount I'm trying to do. So, it'll be a little different than what I usually do. But it says the mist of belly. And the center of all the fins. If, if old habits are hard to work, go ahead and paint it white. You know, paint the skin solid white. I've been known to do that myself. This is what the paint is called, called uh, calling for. Uh, This is the lower belly, I'm thinking the lower tail and all that stuff. Uh, but I definitely don't have a problem with the painting the fin solid white. Uh, now it says the lower belly, so I assume uh, once the fade out, I don't know, kind of midway or something. Uh, you may have to turn him upside down or something to get the other side maybe. supposed to do it or anything like that. It doesn't say. It just says just do it, you know, pretty much. So I'm gonna put about a medium to light coat or medium, something like that, medium coat. I'm gonna get too carried away with it. Fashioned something out of a piece of cardboard, and uh, that's all you need. Oh, I wouldn't say it looks great, great. Okay. Yeah. 
Now usually, uh, even if I'm doing a bass, um, you know, or a walleye, or pretty much any fish in the perch family, um, I always tend to get that lower jaw, even on my skid mount. You know. So this can't be wrong, not really. I go ahead and you know, lock his lower jaw. I know he's getting a lot blue on there and stuff. But, yeah, he's going to get a lot blue on here. But I tend to lighten up. Uh, well, really, if the skin out doesn't have it, but, you know, on the bass, I lighten up all this stuff, you know, pretty well. But, uh, I'll stick with the program on this. Um, that's what I'll do. Okay. Be clean and bright enough. Clean and clean and bright enough. And, uh, kind of got the lower jaw a little bit. Um, always tend to do that. I tend to ride up that between the cheek and the gill flap, that bone. I always ride up through there, but it doesn't do it on this, so I'm not going to do it. Um, so I'm looking at it like we are pretty much done with this color. It's what it looks like. What it looks like. You see, I'm so used to painting the fish solid white, it's kind of throwing me off a little bit, but I'm going to stick with the program. The skin mount bluegill. Okay, looking at the picture that I'm looking at, um, I want to take a little bit more of that out. But the lower jaw is what I'm getting at. Okay. Well, I'm going to end up putting another color over it so it don't really matter, but I kind of, I just want to make sure I do it right. Okay. Out about right there. Okay. There we are. Uh, about right there. Uh, I like to go up in there usually. I'm not supposed to, it looks like, but okay. That's good enough for me. Now, the next color is silver pearl. Silver pearl. Okay, we've got silver pearl. It says a lot like over the entire fish. Turn that down a little bit. Hold on, y'all. Yeah, I guess you can put it on too heavy. For sure. Doesn't want to show on the belly. Lower parts of the mouth. A little bit of a pearly look. Don't look bad. Okay, that's definitely a lot of coke. Now we're going to go to golden yellow. Well, this bank schedule does not call for yellow um, on the fence. Just the body. Uh, 
find the, the upper body. I'm just going to tint. Um, I think the goal is not to cover up all the markings, the natural markings. If that makes any sense. It says heavier above the belly and then kind of lighter on the inside. Uh, it still gets it on the inside, but it's a lighter. So I have to consciously make sure that it's lighter in the middle and maybe heavier on the top and heavier up towards the belly. Um, I would say medium to medium light. That's what I would do. Medium light actually would probably be better. Uh, when, I mean, if you see the color, I think you're good enough. See, we got there, there. I do the other side the same way. And I got a little bit on the fins. I'm not worried about it. Uh, right, uh, right there. Maybe just a hair. There we are. It's all there. Yeah, okay. So it's not on the fins. Heavier on the top, in the bottom, in the middle a little bit lighter, but it's, it's still getting it, as you can tell. There we are. And that was a golden yellow, not bright yellow, but if bright yellow is all you got, I wouldn't be afraid to use bright yellow. Okay, now the paint schedule calls for Selfish Blue. Um, I would think it would kind of interact with the yellow and make green. So I don't know what you can uh, surmise from that. But it wants me to lightly miss on the cheek and over the golden yellow on the mid side. I don't believe it wants me to kill the, uh, the yellow out. You know, but it does want me to lot go over the yellow on the mid side. So I'll let you determine how much you need to do. Uh, some of them call for violet, and some of them call for, I guess, blue. That's what we call them for blue. Okay, just over the midsection. Okay. Just over the midsection. And the cheeks probably already went a little bit too far. But that's your selfish blue. Okay, got my medium green. And it wants me to go on the back and fade out at the ladder line. So I definitely know how to do that. from a frontal angle. I think all these colors go on in moderation. Um, if you put a coat on, you don't want to kill it out completely. So the next color is probably not very stout, strong on there either, if you know what I mean. Um, and this called for yellow, uh, the golden yellow, everywhere pretty much, so with that, it pretty much tells me kind of like what I need to know as far as how uh, stout. I mean, the yellow is supposed to show through. Uh, wants me to do it from the front. And fade out at the lateral line. 
which is not a lot. But apparently the yellow is going to show through a little, or it defeats purpose of putting it on there. So we can definitely put it on there and fade at the red line. There we are. I think it's about the intensity that I need to be, really. I don't think it needs to be much more than that. Anything I probably put it on too much, too. I may go just a hair below the ladder line, but not really. Here we are. Now I'm going to black green. That's all the medium green. I thought I used some on the fins, but apparently not. Okay. Let's see what else it wants me to do. Uh, yeah, sometimes I had trouble in getting these paint schedules to work right. Uh, hopefully this isn't one of the cases. Either they're not descriptive enough or, you know, something like that. But this black green is what you're going to make your marks with. I tend to want to use my marks first, but the paint schedule calls for dogging in the back first. Everything's a little bit backwards. So, we're going to... See if we can get it to work. Yeah, the, the tip of the lip gets a little bit of Sometimes for it to start working, but when it does, okay. we're going right along the back. All right, from the front. I assume we're supposed to go around the highs with it. I think so. Everybody's a little bit different, though. We've got a certain way that I paint, and a lot of times I don't deviate from it too much. I would assume you would add the spray a little bit, you know, to bring out the detail, you know. You're going right along the back. It's a good color to, like if you carded your hand, Good color to color the back of your fans here. Yeah. So I usually put details first in off in the back, but they want me to. Okay, that works. They want me to highlight the fins too from the front. And here we do angle spraying. You see that? Just bring out the rays. When they say highlight, that means bring the rays out. And that's got a pretty good effect. I can see how they want you just to. Uh, might be easier to highlight the pins first. That way, you know you can. Uh, Adjust the color on the back accordingly. Let's see. Okay. I actually doesn't say much for angle spraying any uh, dark in the back with it. It's just old habits, hard to die. That's for sure. Can't highlight fins. Wants me to do the tail, I'm going to have, have to adjust the video. Yeah, a lot of times I'm better off doing things the way I know how to do them, and they, everything just looks better. But we're going to try doing it their way. Um, 
using their words, a lot of times it doesn't come out right. Um, sometimes you're better off if you got your own technique for like painting, sometimes better to use your own. I found that out. So I'm still hanging this frame from the front. Uh, I'm bringing out those spin rays. I think I want you to leave the lot in between. Um, I think that's what the person that made this paint schedule is wanting. But you can kind of see, hopefully. Now, as you get towards the belly, I tend to be a lot, you know, a little bit more of a white color. Uh, it's just the way I tend to do it. <coughs> Same thing on the tail. Um, I'm going to get that from the front, from the upper, from the front. But yeah, that works. Going on there, you want you to leave that light on there on purpose. And it makes it seem more highlighted, I guess. Make it seem more than that. on bigger fish, I'll go this way on the other side, so it's just a bigger fish. You put the markings on with the black and green also. Okay, now you want to make sure the fish is level, and uh, I hope he's level on here. He may not be level on the camera, but he is definitely level. And you put your bars straight up and down for the best effect. Uh, if you do it any other way, it's not going to look good. Around seven or eight, uh, hold on, let me look and see what I've got here. As far as the bar in here. Okay, put bars about one half, one fourth inch apart, starting at the tail. You get wider, you go towards the tail. How dark the back is, is according to how dark the bars are. Okay. I'm thinking about uh, looks like one, four, five, six, around seven to eight or something like that. Don't want to do no more than that. You, you want your fine line setting. Uh, it does say that. Ooh, yeah, don't want to go too hard with them. I mean, it's easily done, of course, but you probably turn your airbrush down if you got it. Uh, yeah, definitely want to be faded out as you get through the belly. Yeah, and I'll even put another one right in here. Looks like about anywhere from one half to one fourth inch apart is what it's calling for. You may want to do some dots or something instead. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of a lot of videos on on me doing this guy, so let's see. Okay, about to Okay. Uh, okay. I'm just kinda getting a rundown. Uh, and then another one right here. You might want to turn the pressure down on your airbrush too, that probably helps. Yeah, 
make sure it's straight up and down. Uh, it's easier said than done, of course. Well, let's see. One right here. Uh, one right there. One there. Yeah, one right there. Yeah. One right there. Yeah, there they are. And then there's some specks in other places on the body. Uh, let's see. You may want to put like a series of spots. I mean, for better clarity. Uh, where it's not all like misty looking or whatever. Uh, it may, you may like that better. I gotta turn my pressure down big time. Sure enough. Too much pressure. We set it at 35, but I don't think I can go down any lower with my pressure. Uh, I don't want to adjust for me. work if I can get it to go. Yeah, there we are. Go ahead and get that ear flat too while you're at it, uh, for sure. Some people make a perfect circle and that'll work if that's what you want to do. That's how you like to do it. It's not really a circle though, but it's close. Okay, now. There's some details in here that would look great on this guy. You know, to get a couple of spots here and there. You know. I 
one thing that's going to go a little darker on the back. Kind of help blend those spots in for sure. Let's see, what else does it cause for? So what else it cause for? It calls for... That's pretty much it. So basically, we got a... Uh, this fish is dark anyway. Uh, you can handle spray and bring the scales out, but you're going to darken them up, that's for sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm always treading lightly when I use this, uh, a paint schedule because, well, they don't kind of tip me. They don't tell you right sometimes. Kind of make you mess up your own fish, you know, a little bit. Uh, you bring out the scales all over the whole fish, you know. Part of the tinning method is being able to bring those scales out. You want to bring the scales out, you know. And I like to uh, you know, bring out the very tips. I do a gently rolling motion like this. Go in between the scales, start in the very outer corners. I do my walleye, my large mouth that way. Even my stripers to an extent. Very lightly on the very, very end, but I do do it. But there's also a black spot right there. And... So I definitely want to put that black spot in there. It's correct. Right here. Yeah, about like that. Faded up, faded in the very corners. I just can't not do this. You know, anything percolated, you know. It's hard for me not to do this. in that very corner out of edge. If you have to blend it in a little, angle spray on the front a little bit more, because that's what I have to do a lot of times anyway. Uh, just to bring that, you know, that, that black off the skin so you can kind of, you know, need to blend in pretty good. And if you have to Bring them in by angles, friend, so do it. You gotta do it. Yeah, a lot of times when you uh, follow somebody else's schedule, you know, uh, you gotta kind of hope it's, they know what they're doing themselves, I guess, is where I work. Uh. I've got uh, vivid orange, and I know it's going to take uh, a medium coat's what it says, which is not much, but you spray it in the breast area. Probably don't need a lot of flow, really. To me, uh, sometimes when they say medium, they're uh, not talking about much at all, really. You know, 
Uh, so it kind of fades out right in there. I'm sure they want a little bit more than that, sort of. I'd say about like that. See, you raise, I can leave those blocks. I can paint those blocks. But go ahead and get him with you know, underneath too. Don't go onto the jaw because that gets the blue. You know. So yeah, medium coat that it calls for. It ends right there where the pectorals start. Uh, it kind of ends like slightly above it a little bit, I guess. I got that right in there. I wouldn't go no farther than that. And looks like on that, looks like they might have put a little bit back here. You know, give a little bit of color. According to the picture I'm looking at. Not stout at all on there. So. That's it. That's it. Medium coat. Yeah, that's what we're giving. What we're giving. Okay. Well, it's supposed to be pale blue, uh, but it's actually. Uh, I don't have any pale blue, but I have turkey head blue, <laughs> and it's pretty pale. So I think it'll work actually. Good. Yeah, it comes up here and fades out. It comes up and fades out. Right there we go. And it comes down here. Yeah. Ah, here. Ah, here we go. Lower cheek a little bit. Uh, the lower jaw. He gets it. Oops. Yeah, now's a good time to clean that off. Um, it'll probably have a little bit of a white ring around it, but I may be able to get rid of that with a little bit of extra paint or something. But usually before I put the last darker color on, I go ahead and clean the eye off. So I roll it one time in a paper towel. I wet it and roll it one time so it don't drip. And then I clean this eye off. And believe it or not, that helps make them look more realistic and better and it can give you a better judgment on what you need to do if you got to do anything extra to your fish. Go ahead and clean that all off real good. And you need to look and see what needs to be done. You know, if anything. And it looks good. You don't have to do anything. I've never painted a blue yellow and not used violet on it to some degree. This calls for blue to go over yellow and I always know it. I know what happens when that happens. When the blue goes over the yellow, it just makes green. But, violet can go over yellow and it doesn't do anything except make violet. So, I want to get my violet. I may have transparent violet, I have to look. But I know I got deep violet. And I can lighten that down and do the same thing. Well, I've got deep violet, which is fine. Uh, just got to thin it down and put it on lightly. Um, I got red violet, that's way too red, too much red in it. And basically, I just kind of want the color to grow on on the midsection. Um, now, there is reference pictures where the bluegill is so, so purple. I mean, it's purple all over, or violet. But, you know. but most paint schedules, 
tall for just like the middle part. But they can have it on their heads and everything. That ball. Even the fins, you know. Uh, but you get the idea. Ugh. Give a little bit of that violet color, you know, and then uh, let it be good enough. Maybe a little bit on the fins. Wow. Definitely not on the belly or on the blue or anything like that. Definitely not that, so. Maybe the midsection where that tends to focus more. There, that's enough violet for me. It's on there. Now, a little bit of everything is showing up a little bit of your violet, a little bit of your other colors on there. Oh. That's got, you know, you're basically done now, but there is iridescent colors that you can throw on it. 